Hey, good afternoon. It is Saturday, 3.30. That's right. I'm on the air on a Saturday. No baseball. Baseball season's over. I have more free time now. So maybe I'll get back and start doing a few more shows here and there now that my 100-plus baseball game season for my two younger children is over. But it's all good, man. I love it. I love being a dad. I love being a father. You know, I don't think I could fully understand what God's plan was for me back in the day. But thank God it went in the direction it did. Because really, at my age, I couldn't imagine my life being any different or being any better than it is right now. So today, we're going to talk about some fun things, but then talk about success. Talk about the things that successful people do in order to get successful. All right? Hey, welcome, regular guy. Thanks for coming into the show. So anyway, it is again today... A beautiful, beautiful Saturday Saturday in Massachusetts. We're at about 90 degrees again today here in the Boston area. The weather is beautiful, you know, just kind of chilling, enjoying the day, enjoying the weather. Love watching the ladies walking around in their summer attire. It's all good. Eric Kirk, welcome to the show. So doing a little impromptu show here on Saturday. As I mentioned, my kids' baseball season is over, so I have some more free time. I'm able to get on the radio a little bit more and do my thing, which I'm absolutely pumped about doing. So for people coming in, please share my live. If it's your first time here, if you could, give me a follow. I would greatly appreciate that. Let's see. My summer attire keeps the neighbors inside. Same thing here, brother. You know, I have an above-ground pool in our backyard, and let's just say that I'm maybe not as slim as I used to be, okay? There's a little bit more of John DeVito to love these days. Radio, welcome to the show. So there's a little bit more of John DeVito to love these days. And when I go out in the pool, I always feel bad if one of the neighbors has to look over and see me shirtless. So sometimes I do, you know, swim with the shirt on because, you know, I've got my moves flopping. They're kind of doing their thing, and it's not always the most beautiful sight in the world, but it is what it is. You know, hey, you can't be beautiful. You can't be talented and intelligent, so I guess I have to click, you know, beautiful off the list, probably along with intelligent also, so I guess, I don't know. (laughs) Talented, I'm not sure I have that either. So anyway, I see Eric Kirk saying he's in the middle of a Zoom call meeting. Hopefully, you'll be able to join. Yeah, I'll be on, Eric, for about an hour, so just chill out and enjoy your Zoom call, and I'm going to be here for a bit. But I just wanted to talk about some general things, and then I wanted to talk about some things that people do to be successful because, you know, I've been reading a lot on social media right now about people who are struggling in their lives, and I've been there. I have been there. You know, I'm a little bit older guy now, so I've been able to kind of make some things happen over the course of my life to become at least somewhat successful in certain aspects of my life. But I know right now with everything that's been going on with the pandemic, with the challenging economy, with all the stuff going on in society, I know that some people are struggling. And if I can use some of my experience, some of my life experience, maybe even to help one person out, I'm going to try to do that. So I'm going to go over a list of some of the things that uh, successful people do in their lives. And actually, when I read it, I actually found it to be a pretty good list. I really did. I was reading through it saying, you know what, these things are all right on the mark. And uh, it's kind of hard sometimes to, you know, to to kind of find your way if you're struggling in your life. And every, I, I don't care who you are. Everyone's been there. Everyone's been there. Confidence does help. I mean, confidence is a huge thing, you know, regular, but The problem is it's hard to have confidence when you're struggling, right? When you don't have a job, if you don't have any money, if you're struggling to get your education, if you came from a family that maybe isn't very encouraging, because I see, I see that quite a bit where there are families out there that, you know, have struggled as a family. And I'm talking generations of families, you know, cousins, uncles, grandparents, and you have families that have really struggled for a long period of time at making things happen in their life. So what they do is they tend to beat down everybody around them. And I've seen it, you know, even firsthand to a point in my life, but I've seen it where, man, you know, for you to make it out of one of these families that holds you down and oppresses you, I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's really, really hard because from the time you're young, you know, you're told dreams aren't possible. You're told that, you know, you're not talented enough to do that. You know, maybe that guy lived his dream over there or maybe that guy made a lot of money and, you know, you're you're not talented. You're not there. And you know, this the idea of this show happened last night. Let me explain to you how this happened. And it it was just a strange little comment that happened last night. Now, for some of you, some of you that know me, you know, I've been working forever. Um, I've worked very hard in my life. My wife's a doctor. She came from a very meager family. You know, I have as well. 
we've done okay in our lives. Are we rich? No, but we've done okay. And we, we, you know, we, we don't have to worry too much about money. And honestly, I could give a shit about money. If you met me, yeah, she did do better. She's brilliant. She's a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> no doubt about it. But I did better in marrying her. So you gotta, you gotta say that is uh, definitely a fair assessment of the situation. But for me, I, I don't give a flying fuck whether you're the CEO of a company, whether you're a fucking Hollywood movie star, whether you're a major league baseball player or a fucking custodian. It does not matter to me. I don't care what your job is. I don't care how much money you make, how much money you have, how much money you don't have. None of that shit <laughs> means anything to me. You're right. Her standards were very low for her brilliance, obviously. So <laughs> I agree. I don't know if you saw There was actually a Seinfeld episode on that. When I think it was, I don't know who it was, was it George was dating someone and she became a doctor and then she dumped him. It was kind of funny. Or maybe maybe it was someone George was trying to date, but it was really a funny episode. It has having to do exactly with that. But the truth of it is, you know, in life, you have to have confidence. You have to believe in yourself. But if you come from a home where you're beaten down all the time, you're told you're worthless, you're told you're stupid, you're told you can't succeed, it's very difficult to make those things happen. Now, the story that happened to me last night that made me think about doing this show today, Jimmy, what's up, brother, is I, I had to pick up my son from the AAA baseball game near my house. The Worcester Red Sox play about 20 minutes away. He went to the game with his friends. I have an older model Corvette convertible that I like to drive. And again, it's older. It's a 2004. It's nothing fancy. I bought it with 45,000 miles on it. Got it for $14,000. I know new Corvettes are like $100,000. So when I drive it, people assume that I spent a lot of money on this car. In which, in fact, I did not. So anyway, I found there's this area across from the ballpark where there's like handicapped handicap parking. And next to the handicapped par parking, there's a few spaces. So I texted my son in the ballpark and said, listen, across from the main entrance, this is where I'm parked. After the game, just come out and I'll be waiting for you. So, okay, cool. So anyway, he, uh, he finally comes out, you know, after like a half an hour. But before that happened, a family walked by my car. And when I parked... My car, I happened to park next to like a Mercedes SUV, nice, nice SUV, nice car. So I hear this woman walking with her husband and her two young children. And all of a sudden I'm sitting in the car. She makes a comment. She goes, oh, this must be where the rich people park. And I kind of like looked a little bit, you know, out of the corner of my eye going, well, first of all, I'm not rich, but you know, <laughs> okay. I see that there are two decent cars here. And she says to her kids, that's never going to be you two, that we we weren't made to be rich. Those are rich people. We're not rich people. She said something on the lines of that. And I remember, you know, sitting there in my car, I felt like literally getting out and just saying, you know what? First of all, you don't know where I came from. You don't know where my wife came from. And here you are telling your young children that no matter what they do in their life, they're not going to be successful. They're not going to have money. They're not going to be able to live their dreams. And that's basically what she said. And honestly, it bothered me like all night last night. I was upset last night when I when I sat down to think about it. I was upset this morning and I was just hanging out. I mowed my lawn this morning and then I went in. I was going to watch the Red Sox game that's coming on shortly. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a podcast about certain things people do to be successful. And you know, when I say su success, and I see rated R is giving me a hard time. That's okay. I like it. That's why you come on Podbean so people can call you stupid and such. Hey, buddy, I need it. I need people to bring me down to ground. I need people to you know, let me realize that there is a reality because I will tell you, Rated R, I am a guy that has confidence. So <laughs> I definitely have confidence. I believe in myself. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to make it, you know, from a very small, you know, very middle class, if not less family in New Hampshire and get a full scholarship to college for football. I've had a very successful business career. At this point, I could retire. I'm not going to retire because I like working, but I have been successful, and we've done it in a variety of different ways. So I guess if I can help in any way, Spicoli, what's up? Good to see you. I love seeing that name pop up on my feed. And, uh, you know, so that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about today. But before I get into doing that, I don't know if anyone's been looking at the news. I saw a few news stories. One of them did make me kind of happy. Uh, yeah, my wife's a doctor, and I'm proud of her. I'm very, very proud of her. My daughter is a, my wife is a brilliant woman. She grew up in a family that was, you know, not a lot of money. Her mother growing up didn't have food. And I am extremely, extremely proud of my wife. I was with her the entire time she went through medical school. She's a hard worker. 
She grew up in a family, like I said, that didn't have much. She works at uh, health centers where she under where she works with the poor. She helps people get off of drugs and beat drug addiction. Yeah, she's. Oh, I know, I know you are. No, I, I'm not taking not taking it personal at all. I just want to explain, you know, my feeling for her. I do talk about her a lot because just because I'm proud of her, I love her. She's an amazing person. She's someone her patients absolutely love, and she really does it for the right reasons. Where she's not there for the money. She's there to help people and does a lot of things for people that need a lot of help. So, yeah, she's really just a special person. So I, I do talk about her a lot. And that was kind of funny. I always say this, that my mother always said to my sister, you know, if you're smart someday, you'll marry a doctor. My sister never did, but I guess I was listening. So I was the one that married one. So Spicoli, what's up with you, man? Hopefully everything is good to you or for you. But um, I don't know if you all saw in the news, you know, I talk a little bit about politics, not too much of it today, but I was happy to see it. It looks like Megan Rapinoe of the U.S. soccer team, Subway's going to drop her because she was kneeling for the national anthem during the Olympics. And I will say I'm not sorry to see that. I thought it was disrespectful. You can make your political statements if you want, but not while you're representing the country in the Olympics. So I was not disappointed uh, to see that happen. So anyway, you know, kind of chilling here. I'm a, I'm a little bummed about summer almost coming to an end. We're in the middle of summer right now. And I agree, Spicoli. I feel the same way. You know, her, Gwen Berry, and all of these people, you know, Fuck it, man. You know, <laughs> people forget that sponsors don't care what your personal views are. And, you know, they shouldn't care. I mean, they shouldn't care. You got Victoria's Secret, you got Subway that are coming out and they're pulling these people as their sponsors. But I guess part of the reason why Subway now is demanding that Megan Rapinoe be dropped is you have all the individual franchises who are calling out and they're saying, listen, we're fucking sick of apologizing to customers. We're paying the corporation money to employ these people to grow our business and people are bullshit that you've got this basically, you know, hating American in, uh, in the position where she, uh, you know, goes out and uh, kneels down on the national anthem. It doesn't do her thing. So I'm glad Subway is making the deal to get rid of her. Hopefully Victoria's Secret does the same. And you've got other Olympians. You've got that woman that, you know, won the gold medal. African-American woman was draping herself in the flag. Give her a deal. Give her some money. You know, put her in a commercial. I'll support a, 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 you know, a company that is giving money and giving a job to a woman who loves the country that she lives in and represents that country with everything she's got. So that was just, you know, awesome to see. And hopefully that will continue in the future. But as far as Megan Rapinoe, see you later. Yeah, she's got none, dude. <laughs> she's got nothing. And uh, yeah, she's got nothing going on. So anyway, yeah, soccer players. Some of them are, I guess, attractive. But Reagan, Megan Rapinoe, of course, gay, married to NBA star Sue Bird, who I think is more attractive than she is. But uh, yeah, definitely not too much usually happening up top with those ladies. So <laughs> no doubt about that. So anyway, now I, I know I know we've got a lot of people in here that are you know talented people, smart people. I know this podcast is going to be going out via download at some point, and we'll have some other people listening there. But you know, even last night when I was on um, the live feed last night, and we had Chris unplugged, I was listening to his show last night. Does anyone know where this guy came from? I mean, Chris Unplugged is amazing. When he gets on and when he is, like, playing his music, mixing his shit, I mean, this guy is talented. He should be, like, in a New York City club someplace. He should be playing in a major station somewhere. I mean, he is incredibly talented. And there's my man, Mike from Tampa Bay, has joined. Mike, good to see you, brother. Good to see a good friend coming in. And uh, I'm doing a little show today, just decided to do an impromptu show, just talking about some fun stuff right now. But very shortly, I'm going to be getting to a list where I'm just going to be talking about some of the things maybe that people do that caused them to be successful. And Mike, I know that you've been kind of on a journey in your life where you're trying to figure things out and you look like you're doing really well with your life. And I love some of the things that you post and uh, you and I, you know, I consider you to be a great friend. So maybe at some point when I'm get done going through this list, maybe you want to kind of call in at the end of it and give me some of your feelings as to some of the things that make a person successful. So let me get to this list right now. And this, this is a list I found and I went through this and I'm actually reading a book right now that I think is really good because I'm in sales and I've been doing this for a long time. And the book I'm reading right now, I won't give the title title of that yet. I'm going to kind of finish it before I'm done reading it, you know, before I start reviewing it. But the book I'm reading right now is very good. And it's really even after me being in like, you know, me being in sales for like 25 years, it's still giving me a lot of things to kind of help me learn, you know, about uh, being better at what I do. So, hey, Lucky Irish, uh, John D, welcome. P PBG, welcome uh, to the show. So today, you, if you're coming in, 
to learn a little bit about some of the things I'm going to talk about, about some of the habits of successful people. I'm starting right now, and hopefully this helps you you know, some way in your life, you know, if you're struggling with a relationship, if you're struggling as a parent, if you're looking to meet someone to form a relationship, if you're struggling in your career, I find lists like this very helpful for me to make myself better. Because I mean, let's face it, none of us are perfect. We all struggle at times in our lives. I've certainly struggled plenty. I've struggled recently. And these type of things kind of help me you know, kind of figure out what I need to do to maybe get back on track. So, you know, I think it's funny. It, the, the, the first sentence of this article, I think, is so on point. And I'm going to read this first sentence. It says, aside from the random element of luck, much of what makes some people successful involves the cultivating of certain habits. Learning what these habits are and how to employ them in your own life is worthwhile. And the reason why I want to emphasize this to, uh, you know, to a point is I've, I've heard so many people say this to me and even relatives that will come out and say, you know what? I'm just not lucky. You know, I have no luck. I can't win. The breaks never go my way. You know, you're lucky. Other people are lucky. I never fall into anything. I don't get the job I want. You know, I haven't met the right person. And it's funny how many people do feel that being successful is just a random happening or a random ele you know, element of luck. And, you know, let's face it. I mean, if you go out and buy a Powerball ticket tonight and you win $700 million, I mean, obviously that's luck. You know, it's a one in 300 million chance and <laughs> you got lucky. I mean, sometimes like luck does rule sometimes lightning does strike but really for the most part when you're looking at day in and day out it's not luck it's not luck that makes you, makes you successful it's going out and working a plan it's working a plan developing a plan and working that plan so here's the list of 10 i'm going to buzz through this you know fairly quickly and then we'll talk about it a little bit i don't want this to be too too long of a show but anyway number one and this is so true number one on the list is organization one of the most frequently mentioned habits of those who are successful in life is organization. And that includes planning as well as setting priorities and goals. And I say this to my children a lot. You know, I talk to them. I've got four kids and I've got two kids that want to be baseball players. You know, obviously that's a very difficult thing to do. I have a daughter that wants to be a doctor, a son that wants to be an actor. So they all have kind of lofty goals. And what I say to them is like, listen, you know, dreams are a good thing to have. Dreams are wonderful, but a dream can't just be a dream. If you sit there and go, well, you know, I hope someday I get famous. I hope someday, you know, the Boston Red Sox see me playing a game and they and they and they pick me. You know, I hope someday maybe I get a role in a big movie because I walk into a coffee shop in LA and someone notices me. You know, generally things like that don't happen to regular people. So what, this, what, what I mean by this is you need to be organized. And when I say organized, number one, you have to have a plan for whatever it is you want to do. You know, if you, if you want to be, if you want to live on your own in an apartment, if you want to have a successful relationship, if you want to pursue being an engineer, you have to have a plan, right? You have to have a plan. You have to sit down with a list and write down your plan as to how you are going to achieve this goal. And with that plan, it can't just be writing down a list and then taking that list and throwing it someplace and not looking at it for three months. You have to come up with your plan. You have to write out your goals and then you have to work that plan. You have to decide every day that I'm going to spend, you know, two hours, three hours, one hour, 15 minutes, you know, 10 hours, whatever, whatever you have in order to make that, that dream happen. I mean, you may have a dream that's, you know, like a side thing from what your current job is and you can't afford to spend four hours a day. You know, I mean, but for me, I, I look at my son, my son wants to be a professional baseball player. And I always tell him, listen, whatever your dream is, I'm going to try to help you, but you have to have a plan and you have to go after it. Crazy town. Welcome. So for him, you know, when I see him sitting in the house some days playing Xbox for like 10 hours a day, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'll make a comment and I'll be like, listen, buddy, you've told me that you want to be a professional baseball player. And if that's still your dream, you can't sit in the house just playing Xbox all day and think that's going to happen. There are thousands of kids in the Dominican Republic right now that are playing baseball 10 hours a day and they want to get 
past their poverty lives and play in the MLB and make millions of dollars. So if you're going to really work that dream, you have to be the best of the very best in that career. And in order to do so, you need to do the right things. You need to go to the gym. You need to work out. You need to hit baseballs off the tee. You need to go to your practices and give 100%. You know, you have to work on your game and you have to work on your craft. And it drives me crazy when I see people that don't have like an organized plan as to how they're going to go after their dream. Because if you don't have that organized plan, it's not going to happen. And you're going to be one of those people that sits back and says, oh, boy, you know, my friend over there is lucky. He's got a lot of money. You know, I don't have money. You know, like for my, my wife and I, you know, we're not like super rich, but we have some money. And one of the reasons why we have money is when we were young, you know, 18, 19, 20, we always went by the strategy of when you have a job, you pay yourself first before you pay your bills, before you go out and drink, before you go out and buy an expensive car, before you buy that coach purse, before you buy those Birkenstocks or expensive sunglasses, you put your money away first. So we always, always, always save the maximum that we can into like a 401k, into a stock program, into a retirement program, into an IRA, and we save, 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 save. And it's funny, when you start doing that when you're young, eventually you don't even miss the money. The money's just gone. You know, it's gone. It's in your savings. And if you are listening to me now and you're a young person and you're, you know, 18, 19, 20, 25, even 30, and you start saving your money now in a retirement plan in the stock market, or if you save your money in an IRA, any of those things, by the time you retire, you will be a millionaire. You will be a millionaire. I know that a lot of people think, well, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find that latest get, get rich quick scheme. I'm going to invent something. I'm going to, you know, do something special and I'm going to make millions. Maybe that'll happen. But for most of the people out there, that does not happen. For most of the people out there, you need to be organized and you need to be consistent in planning out what you want to achieve for your dreams and also planning out what you want for your financial dreams. So didn't mean to talk that much on number one, but being organized keeping lists, making sure you are organized and what you want to do is so important to achieving your goals in life. And I, I hope that all of you will take a point to, you know, organize your desk, organize your life. If you have a plan that you want to work in a certain place, you know, go ahead and write down that list. You know, th this is where I'd like to work. How am I going to get there? You know, okay, you have a high school degree. They require a college degree. Go get your college degree. You know, if they need experience, find a company like that where you can get similar experience, volunteer at that company to get your foot in the door. You know, there are ways to be proactive and going after what you want. Hey, Mike, I think I, I plugged you in. Give me a second as I go through this and then we'll go to you. I'm going to get through a few of these and then we will get to you and have you kind of chime in on this. So number two, and this is kind of an interesting one, you know, organization number one, relaxation is on that list. So why would relaxation be important on that list? Because it's true. Now, this is something that my wife struggles with. She is a type A personality, badass, works her ass off all the time. And she does it because she's afraid of failure. You know, my wife grew up in a family where some of her family did well, but you know, some of the family didn't do well. And it was very stressful for her. And she's always afraid of failing. So she literally works her ass off and has a very, very difficult time ever relaxing. And it really, it sounds like a good thing, but it really isn't a good thing. It's very hard for her to deal with. So, you know, re relaxation is important. If you find a way to like, maybe go to the gym, if you can meditate, go for a walk at night, you know, whatever it may be, you need to find some way to unwind in your life. Because I mean, I think we all, especially over the last year with the pandemic and all this stuff going on, I mean, we have all been, you, you can't be Spicoli. You can't be all work and no play. You have to have a balance in your life. You have to have a balance. You have to live for joy. You have to live for happiness. And it really helps if you can find a job that you love also. Like if you're looking into a career and you're waking, you're going to work every day and you are miserable, you can't sleep at night because you hate your job. You wake up in the morning and you're sick to your stomach. You know, that's no way to live life. You need to find a career and a job that you enjoy going to. And then maybe it won't be as much of a, a you know, a, a terrible thing to have this job. I mean, you may want to go to work and you may feel happy going to work and you may enjoy what you're doing, but relaxation is so important. Like for me, I always find, find downtime. You know, we, we get really busy and my, my job is very seasonal. Like in the summer it gets busy 
in the fall, it's very busy. But around the holidays and in the winter, when I do more podcasts, my job is really slow. Jimmy, I was just thinking that. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. My favorite movie. Absolutely. So welcome to everybody coming in. So we've got, we're getting through our top 10 list of people of things people do when they're very successful people. So now this, this one's huge. And I talked about this a little bit. Number three, dreams are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. I still have dreams. I'm 53 years old. I used to want to be a broadcaster. Well, with modern technology, I can do podcasts. And for me, I'm living a dream by doing this. You know, is it going to be my career? No, but I enjoy it. It's fun. I've got some people that enjoy what I do and it's all good to me. So for me, you know, I have this dream and I'm finally taking action on this dream. Back when I was 22 years old, I didn't think this was a viable way to make a living. So I never went after it. I I gave up and I kind of sold out to corporate America. And I did what people told me I should do. Go out and get a real job is what they say. But if you have a dream and if you have something you want to pursue, you need to take action. Without taking action, and, and working that plan that you've created, you will never be successful. You will never achieve your dream. You will never go after it. But when you take action, there's also that problem where you will worry about potentially failing, right? So if you go out and you try to live your dream and it doesn't work out and you're taking action, you do have that fear of failure. But you have to be willing to fail once you go and start taking action because you're going to fail no matter what dream you pursue, no matter what job you pursue, no matter you know, whether it's a relationship, you are going to have failures. It's part of life. And you need to learn how to build a bridge with your failures, as opposed to letting those failures stack up on the top of your head and weigh you down. You got to use the failures, build a bridge, have those motivate you and continue to take that action. Okay. Personal care is another one. That's number four on the list. We've got 10 on this list, personal care. And this is something I need to get back to a little bit, but personal care of yourself. You get, you really have to take care of yourself you know, with diet, with exercise, with hygiene and things like that. Because if you're not taking care of your body and you're not taking care of yourself, that affects your confidence. And I think also it does affect the way other people see you as well. So I think that certainly you do have to make sure you're taking care of yourself as well with some good personal care. All right. Number five. Now, this one is huge to me. All right. Huge. You got to have a positive attitude, right? For the people that are out there, I mean, how many people do you know that are completely pessimistic, you know, oh man, it looks like it's going to be a hot one today. I can't do it again today. You know, how you doing? Hanging in there. You know, I'm hanging in there. I don't know, man. You know, things haven't been great lately. There are people out there that no matter what you say to them, they find the negative in it. They find the negative. The glass is always half empty, right? And no matter what you say to them, I can't win. You know, I I wasn't cut out to do that. I'm never going to be successful. No one in my family has ever been successful. You know, that's just not our family. We're not like that. You can't be that way. If you don't believe in yourself and if you don't believe that you could do great things in your life, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen, right? You've got to, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe and you've got to be positive, be positive, feel that good things are always on the way, feel that good things are happening. Good things are going to come your way. Even if you can't see the positive that maybe God has in store for you, you have to believe that that plan is going to work itself out. And if you continue to be positive and you continue to be optimistic, good things are going to happen and you'll be ready when someone opens that door or window of opportunity for you, if you're negative and you're pessimistic, you will be the person that's too afraid to walk through that door of opportunity. You'll be that person that's too afraid to walk through that window of opportunity. And that's, you know, I've done some shows lately about fear. We can't be afraid. We can't be afraid to go after what we want in this life because it's short. We don't know how long we're here for, and you need to embrace it and go after it. So anyway, that's, To me, having a positive attitude is literally the most important thing you can do in your life. And it's hard. Some days you wake up and you're just not feeling it. You wake up, oh, yesterday at work sucked. I don't want to go to this meeting. You can't have that attitude. You've got to spring out of bed. Today's going to be a great day. I'm going to make things happen. And if it doesn't work today, all right, well, you know, today didn't work out the way I expected. Tomorrow's going to be the day. I'm going to go get it tomorrow. And you have to. You have to go after it. You have to have a positive attitude because without that, I don't think you ever have a chance of succeeding. And I don't know many people that are pessimistic and negative that have succeeded. 
All right. So number six on this list list is networking. This I'll tell you, I have found this out over the last several years. I wish I had found this out earlier. It really is a lot of times in life about who you know, not just what you know. For me in my business, I feel that LinkedIn is very helpful where I'm able to reach out to people, make connections with people. And actually LinkedIn is responsible for the two la- the last two jobs I've had because I've formed relationships by networking through that social media platform. So you know, even in some of the movies that I've done, it's been because of networking. I've met people at these movies and they continue to bring you back, you know, for small roles in these different things. And networking is so important. So I think, you know, if you're looking to get into a business, you know, go to some job fairs, go to the local you know, chamber of commerce meetings. I mean, try to if you're a sports guy, try to go to like, a, you know, some, some sporting events and meet people that maybe work for that organization. I mean, you've got to find a way to meet people in the area that you want to go into and hopefully find a mentor that can maybe help you. All right. So networking, I think is important. Now, number seven, this one I love, (laughs) I really do. And number seven is frugality, being cheap, being frugal. And I can tell you right now, my wife and I are extremely frugal. We are very cheap. Our parents were the same way. If right now, if you saw me, I can look down. I don't have video. I've got my $15 Carhartt shirt on. I've got a pair of shorts on, no socks. Uh, I, I hardly ever you know, dress in really nice clothes unless I'm working that I put you know decent clothes on. And I'm not saying that that's the answer to everything. But when we go out and we buy cars, we always buy pre-owned. No matter what I purchase, I negotiate. Even in department stores, if I'm buying clothes, I'll ask them, do you have any coupons? Do you have that 30% off coupon? Let me have that. I negotiate literally everything I purchase, and I never, ever pay full price for anything ever. So it's one of those things where I think in life, you know, you can make $500,000 a year, but if you spend $700,000 a year, you're poor, right? If you make $50,000 a year and you're able to save $20,000 a year and you do that over 40 years, that's $400,000 before you even talk about interest in the stock market, you could be looking at a million dollars by the time you retire. So frugality is important where I think you need to decide in your life, do I need that coach purse? Do I need that expensive sports car? Do I need that lease BMW so I can show everybody out there how rich I am in real life? I'm not rich, but if I have this BMW, everyone thinks I'm rich. Is it important for me to have that? Or should I take that money and save it and invest it and let that money grow? (laughs) Hopefully not negotiable at the dollar store. Now, Mike, I actually shop at the dollar store quite often, just so you know. And the other day when I brought my kids to a movie, uh, there's a movie uh, theater right next to one of the dollar stores. So do you think I let my kids buy candy in the movie theater? Hell no. They're not spending five bucks for a box of M&Ms when you can go into the dollar store and get that same box for like, you know, 50 cents or a dollar and stuff it in your pocket as you go into the movie theater. So hell no. But I do use the dollar store as frequently as I can. All right. Rising early. This is one, too, where you want to get up do your work and do your thing. And I know a lot of people do that. I, you know, I do get up early just naturally. I have most of my life, but for me, there, there are certain days where I don't like getting up early and I'm not up at five o'clock in the morning every day, but it does help if you get up every day, you know, you don't sleep till like two o'clock in the afternoon. And this this is, let me tell the story. This is, this is really kind of funny. I mean, I know all of you know that my father-in-law passed away in early July and great guy. He did really well in his life. He worked hard, saved money, and he did well. And he, you know, he was a, he was a good guy that really cared about others. And it was funny when, <laughs> when after he retired, <laughs> he used to like to sleep till like three or four, four o'clock in the afternoon. So when after he retired, I remember I went to the house with the family, and he was reading the book, The Seven Habits of High, Highly Affected People, Effective People. So I saw the book on his side table, and I picked it up. I started looking through it, and uh, his wife at the time, she passed away eventually. Also, she's like, yeah that's Walter's new book. He's reading about effective people and how they, how they become successful. And I remember I looked at my wife and just kind of made a quiet comment. I'm like, shouldn't number one on that list be like, get up in the morning as opposed to like four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Cause that's what he did every day. That should have been like the prerequisite reading, you know, before he got to that. So anyway, let me run down these last couple and then I'm going to get to Eric and Mike and whoever else might want to call in. We'll free up the show and uh, talk about some other things. So uh, number nine is sharing. This is a good thing. I mean, if you can go out, donate to a charity, do good things for other people. I mean, be a philanthropist. I think that's a great way to lead your life. 
I try to give big tips when I can. I try to donate money when I can and clothing and things like that. And if for whatever reason, hey, little, little Jay, how you doing there? Good to see you. If you don't have the money to do that, you can volunteer. You know, go feed the homeless. I mean, do something to help society. I think that's always a good thing. And number 10 on the list is reading. This is something I'm not great at. I'm actually reading a book right now. I don't always have a lot of time to read, but I do try to read things that'll help improve me. And I've been better at listening to things like audiobooks and things like that. So that's my list. And let me run it down really quickly before we move on. So anyway, if if you're looking for some help, if you think this list helps you, I hope it did. But these are some of the 10 habits of successful people. Number one is organization. Number two is relaxation. Number three is taking action. Number four is personal care. Number five is having a positive attitude. Number six is networking. Number seven is being frugal. Number eight is rising early. Number nine is sharing. And number 10 is reading. So I hope that list helps out some of you. And Eric, I see that you popped in to the show. So I want to give you a big welcome. And Mike, are you still with me up there? I don't see you, but are you still there? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Um, my Zoom meeting just got done. So I'm finally able to join you. Boomer John again without the right button to put on. All right, go ahead, guys. Try Zoom? it out. I can hear you. <laughs> well, um, the Zoom meeting just wrapped up for me. So, um, hey, Jim. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what, what was the Zoom meeting about, Eric? I mean, it's that weekly free think meeting that I attend. Oh, nice. That's with Arch Kennedy and that group, I think. Yeah, Jim Dwyer, you know, who lives in Massachusetts, but he wasn't able to make it in this week. Um, Ray and, and Dave and Dustin and Peter were there. Nice. Yeah, Arch Kennedy, I think, <laughs> followed me on Instagram. And he's got quite a following. So I was kind of uh, humble. Yeah. When I had him follow me, he's uh, obviously a pretty well, well I know guy. you're following him on Getter, but I don't know if he's quite followed you back there, but we still got to work on <laughs> getting slightly on Getter, and then hopefully Mike might work on it soon. Yeah, I, I don't have any What's that? What's Getter? You know, Get, Getter. It, 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 what is yeah. – Go ahead, Eric. It, it, it's kind of like an alternative to like – like a free speech-friendly alternative to Twitter. Right. Kind of like a parlor. Like, like G-E-T? G-E-T-E-R? G-E-T-T-R. T-T, okay. Well, you know, John, you know, there's nothing wrong about being frugal, you know, if, no. and, and if you don't have to pay full price for something, you don't have to. I never like to pay full price. If I don't have to, I'm not going to pay it. Like, I just bought two movie tickets right now to go see uh, Snake Eyes in the movie theater. The ticket price is ten ninety nine uh, for each ticket. I only paid $4 for both Perfect. tickets. Perfect. So instead of paying like $22 for tickets, I paid $4 for a pair of tickets. I was like, nope. I was like, I don't have to spend the money. I'm not going to spend it. I'll, I'll find a way to drop it down as much as I can. <laughs> you know, pe people, when they go out and they spend their money, they don't think about things, you know, really how much they actually cost. I mean, if you, if you think about right. even if you even if you save 20 cents a gallon on a gas of, you know, of a gallon <clears> of gas, <throat> for me, I have a car that takes 20 gallons of gasoline or 25 gallons. But if you can save 20 cents a gallon, that's two dollars a tank. If you go through two tanks a week, I mean, that's 40 bucks a week. That is what 160 bucks a month. I mean, that's like two thousand dollars a year by just shopping for cheaper gas. And you take right. that two thousand dollars, you invest it in the stock market, and over 30 years, you probably have three hundred thousand dollars if everything grows like it has been historically. I mean, if you could do things like that, like cutting back on the amount of money you spend at a gas station instead of getting Starbucks every day, make your coffee at home. I mean, and that's a tough one for me. I'm not a Starbucks guy, but I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy. And I do love my Dunkin' Donuts. But, I mean, there are a lot of little ways where you can just kind of cut back on things, and then you have this extra money. And if you have that extra money, instead of just blowing it on things to impress other people, take that money and invest it. Put it in the stock market. Put it in real estate. And over time, you're going to have a shitload of money. I mean, you, you'd be surprised how much that money grows, you know, over time. So, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Mike, I, I, I never pay it. Honestly, I don't, I'm good I don't with gasoline I'm, when it comes to buying gas. I always find like reward programs and things to make the gas cheaper. So I never really pay full price for <laughs> gas either. Oh, yeah, it's smart. I see Lil, uh, Lil's talking about she loves coupons. Same thing with us. We have an Amazon credit card. So because our life's so busy, we buy a ton of stuff on Amazon. And even even when, when my father-in-law passed away, we had to pay for the funeral. You know, we had the money to do so. So it was like $12,600. We put the entire amount on our Amazon credit card, and we literally got tons of points just for that. And since then, we paid it off, so we didn't pay any interest on it. But I think for Christmas now – 
we have somewhere in the ballpark of like $2,000 worth of points through Amazon nice. in which we're going to be able to buy Christmas presents for our kids. So, I mean, you know, we're not getting hit with interest and we're just putting things on this card. We're running up the points. And I mean, a good majority of our kids' Christmas presents will be on money we've earned through the credit card just by making, you know, everyday life purchases. So there's a lot of things you can do, you know, like that. And uh, I think frugal, you know, being frugal is definitely a, a good thing. How about you, Mike? Are you frugal? Do you like Is that, that a better word? What's that? Is that a better word for being cheap? Yeah. Is that cheap. what that means? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's that's not a bad thing. It's yeah. – yeah, I – um, are we talking about for – yeah, I'm very picky. I'm very good with money. I uh, manage it well because um, in the past, I learned not managing my money yeah. leaves me broke and not I've able to uh, – I've been there. Yeah, and it sucks, but – I guess I needed to learn that, you know, in life. Um, you, you hit something really big, I think, is maybe the key to any success um, is failure. Yes. We need we need failure in life. Have we have to have it. You, have to you need it. You have to because it's not right. – um, it, it shapes us. It chisels away at the things, you know, that we don't need. I guess the access stuff, the things that, you know, um, bad habits, bad um, – thought process, bad attitudes or ways that we view life. I mean, it's a way to chip those things away at us that frees us up, I guess. And that failure is, is you know, helps us move, helps us grow. I, I agree completely. I see. Hi, welcome to the room, to the chat room. You know, I, you know, I, you know, I think it's hard. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are afraid to fail because they don't have confidence. And I don't say that to be, you know, mean anyway, but I, I think confidence is hard. I mean, to, to give you an example of my own oh, personal yes. life, my, my father, when I was a kid, was very, very, very verbally and emotionally abusive to me. He told me I was stupid. He told me I was fat. He told me, you know, a lot of different things that were very hurtful. But when it comes from an authority figure in your life, you tend to believe these negative things. I mean, why would my father lie to me? You know, why? I mean, you know, we, we're not rich. You know, we're not, we're not like those people. Hurts. And it, it hurts and you believe it. And you believe it. And I, I still say to this day, you know, when I was young, I was a really good baseball player, really good. But one of the issues I had is I didn't believe in myself. I needed someone to, you know, put his arm around me and tell me, man, you are really good at this. You need to keep going. And I didn't have that. And I, and if I did have someone tell me, I didn't believe them. So for me, I always thought in my head, no matter what I did, I would fail. I always thought that I didn't have what it took to succeed. And that was one of the reasons why I was afraid to fail and one of the reasons why I didn't try things. So I think, you know, when you when when you talk about accepting failure and looking to go out and try things and not being afraid of failure, you have to know, I think, before you do that, that failure is okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this mm -hmm. world. I mean, I love reading the thing about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln failed in like 15 different things before he became president. He had businesses fail. Oh, yeah. He lost bids for the yeah. Senate. I mean, if you looked at his life, he had one massive failure after another, and then he yeah. became president of the United States. I mean, you know, he, he was a guy that sometimes – go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, sometimes it takes completely screwing up on something, on, like it's like screwing up on like the first path you take to be able to recognize that this isn't the right path, you know, and it's just uh, – it helps you see, I guess. A hey, good question. I, I see. Uh, I see the question down in the chat. Let me answer this really quickly. And it's okay. It's it's okay that you say that. Sorry to say this. She said, but why did your mother allow a man to treat her child that way? And you're right. He treated myself and my sister both that way. My mother had muscular dystrophy. She was in a wheelchair, and she did have times when she fought back against him. But quite frankly, he was equally as emotionally abusive to her. And I don't think I saw it all the time, but I do believe that he was also physically abusive to my mother. I did witness it once where he smashed her right across the flip face, and she had blood in her teeth. And I was little when that happened, but I do faintly remember that. So I think that while my mother wanted to – stick up for her kids. She was also afraid for herself. And she, you know, unfortunately being sick, didn't have the ability to leave really and didn't really have a support system. So I, I get what you're saying. I know if I was doing that, my wife would most likely kill me. I don't do it. But if I did, you know, I'd probably get a, a knife to the back of the head. I imagine while I was sleeping or something to that effect. But I wanted to, I wanted to address that. I didn't want to just pass, you know, pass it by, but I, I get what you're saying a hundred percent. And you're right. I, I wish there had been someone that stood up and, you know, got rid of him and told him not to, not to do that. But unfortunately it didn't happen. And, you know, I mean, I think one of the things is I've learned to be a very resilient person. It took me a long time to get where I am right now, 
But, you know, I am also a person that doesn't speak to other people that way. I'm very much into supporting other people, helping other people. And if I feel that someone is being mistreated, I'm the first person to stand up for someone that's in that situation because I think I walked in those shoes. But I appreciate you bringing that up. So, Mike, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I just wanted to answer that. So, what's going on with you, Mike? So, I, um, you know, you were talking about uh, some of the things that I was talking about on the list. Now, what, what do you think about having a positive attitude? This is for all you guys, Eric, Mike, Jimmy. I mean, I think being positive is so important, you know, to success. It, it is. Yes. It does. Because, I mean, I – I mean, you know my story. I've always been, I used to be shy. I used to be fearful of everything in life. So I, like, I, I guess that was my negative outlook on life, but I always had this inside of me, this hope, this belief that, you know, I could, yeah, it was just something, no, not a chip. I don't, it wasn't something that was, uh, what towards you? A reason why I just, yeah, I was, yeah. But, um, I just, it's, I choose, I guess this attitude to be positive. I don't, force it on myself like oh it's going to be a good day i just say it's going to be a good day and you know when i wake up in the morning i don't always say that but it's important to have that kind of mindset because it allows me to approach things in life um i guess with a good perspective you know being optimistic um understanding failures and 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 fear and what it it does and how it can motivate you and just use it as a tool instead of um you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think you're right. How about yeah. you, Jimmy? I mean, do you do you find yourself to be a positive guy? You know, glass half full, or more of like a more of a pessimist? You know, glass half empty type of person. Why well, I, I always say the glass is half full. I never like to look at it as half empty. Uh, I I used to be a negative person uh, when I was a teenager, uh, teenager, young adult. Uh, I, I I was negative. I had I did had a chip, I guess you could say like a chip on my shoulder towards myself. You know, you know, and uh, but then I realized, you know, you know, I'm better better than that. You know, every day is a new day. It's a it's a new day to uh to rise and start something new and be a be a successful at it. And just because I I I fail once doesn't mean I'm gonna continue to fail. It's just the first time I did it didn't work out. So learn from my mistakes, get up, keep pushing on. And, you know, that was the one thing that my dad always taught me was just because, you know, you get, you know, you get a mountain in, in your path, when, a path in life when you're walking. Doesn't mean to sit there and cry. I mean, you can always go around it to the left, go around the mountain to the right. You can go underneath the mountain. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Up on the other side. And Did you say mountain? Mountain. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just checking. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, there's a mountain on the left. You can go around on the left side of the mountain. You can go uh, around the on the right side of that mountain. You can go underneath the mountain and pop up on the other side. You can go up the mountain and climb down. And by God, you can go through that mountain. But there's always a way to get past that mountain uh, in life. You, you know, you just can't sit there and cry about it. You know, and you can be successful. Su- su- well, I can't even talk successful uh, in life. You know, you just got to have that go get it attitude and. Remember, there's nothing you can't do in this world if you don't put your mind to it and try. And, you know, keep in mind, everybody, too, success is different for everybody. You know, success doesn't have to be a big right. pile of money. You know, success could be, you know, you want to just have a happy relationship with somebody. Hey, success, success could be that you don't want to look like Cummings. Oh, shit, is he here now? Oh, I just saw that he came in. Jeremy, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> oh, Jeremy from Cummings. It's like the Native American, wise Native American said, with persistence <laughs> comes perseverance. Hey, Cummings, did you see Mac Jones play the, the other night? I thought you looked pretty good. I'm pretty jacked about him up here in New England. So go Mac Jones, Alabama, and New England connection. I'm pretty pumped about Gators. that. Gators. Oh, yeah, dude, I, told you, I have a Gators hat, man. I told you when I was down in Florida, we went Gator to a Florida power. Gators baseball game. That's where Ethan wants to play. So uh, now if you're a Gators fan, <laughs> now, this is a little bit of trivia for you. I'm not sure if I mentioned this at all before. Uh, myself and my son Ethan and my son Brandon – with the three first fans in the new baseball stadium in Florida. Nice. They, opened the, they, they opened the new baseball stadium this year for the Gators, and it was supposed to be a 1 o'clock game, so we drove up from Orlando. It started raining on the way up, and they postponed the game to like 5, so we were already almost there. So we drove around the campus, went to the football stadium. We actually got in line for the baseball stadium, and we were let in first, and a newspaper guy interviewed us. If you actually 
like put my name in with Florida Gators, you'll see the story come up where they interviewed my son about being the first fans into the new stadium. It was pretty cool. So uh, we loved what, it. What, the um, Alfred Alfred Field or the uh, Alfred Mitt? Um, dang it. Was it it's, it's at UF, right? The old yeah, UF, Alfred the brand Mitt, new baseball field. McKeenan yeah. Field or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember what the name of it was. It was right across from the softball field, I remember, and we went in. But see, the place I, is I, huge. It's amazing. Beautiful field. Beautiful. We had a blast. It was so cool being there. But Cummings, let's see. I do too. The racism against him wasn't surprising. No, I see. I heard, I saw you mention what that. Racism. What 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 racism was there against Mac Jones? Hey, I didn't Dina see Joe. that. Hey, Dean and Joe, how you doing? Nice to see you. Dean and Joe. Yeah. So what what happened with Mac Dina Jones? Joe. Because I didn't watch the whole game. Oh, you got to oh. talk about it. Cool. Yeah. If anybody else wants to call in, we're kind of just uh, freestyling right now, just chatting a little bit. We did my show and we're just chatting a little bit. So <laughs> now, what was the racism? I didn't hear this coming because we love Mac Jones up in New England so far. Was it oh no, dude. It was it was like it was your typical liberal Twitter trolls, but. They were uh, they were saying after the game how how racist was it and how surprising was it that a Boston team has a white quarterback when they have a better black quarterback on the roster and I mean it was it was insane. Cam Newton went <laughs> oh, in. Jesus Christ! They have to call the most random shit. Let me let me address that. All right, and this this is going to be very honest, very clear because I had heard this before and I didn't know this had come back again. Let me be clear first of all on Cam Newton. All right, Patriots quarterback, personally. I'm up here in New England, okay? I'm up here. I listen to the sports stations. I read all the blogs. People up here in New England absolutely love Cam Newton as a person. They love him. He's a great guy. He's been embraced by the media. The fans love Cam Newton. They have no problem with him other than the fact he cannot throw the football. Cam Newton (laughs) can run the football very well, much better than Tom Brady could have ever even imagined running the football. But Cam Newton last year, now it did go in with him not having good receivers, but if you watched him all season last year like I did, the man just doesn't have it anymore. He cannot throw the football. He is no longer an NFL quarterback. Now, one of the things I said was I would love to see Cam Newton maybe become a tight end or a receiver or something to that effect because he can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He's a big, strong guy. I'd love to see him change positions. I mean, that will obviously never happen because he still feels like he's a quarterback. Now, don't forget also, we went from having the best quarterback in the history of the game to a guy that came in and everyone liked him, but he couldn't throw the ball. He threw five touchdowns going into the last game of the season last year. Tom Brady threw upwards of 50 touchdowns in a few years. Cam Newton threw five. You can't have an NFL quarterback throw five touchdowns and expect an organization to be happy with him. If Cam Newton ends up as the start of this year and he comes out and he's revitalized and he throws 30 touchdowns and he leads the team to the Super Bowl, we will love Cam Newton like any other quarterback or any other athlete in the world. Boston is not racist. We just want a winner. We want a good player and we don't feel like Cam Newton has the skills anymore. That's what it comes down to. Up in New England, you have a very educated sports base of people that live and die by the sports teams probably a lot like what you have in alabama with your with your college teams up here you really don't have viable college teams you have boston college and unless you make nine hundred thousand dollars a year and walk around with whales on your pants you don't like boston college up here they're a bunch of annoying little yuppies i hate bc so i'm not a bc fan but uh yeah i mean we are professional sports fans up here and uh cam newton it's not it's nothing about race you know, if you, if you gave us a quarterback that could play, I don't care what color he is. If he can win, he can win. But I think that was part of the problem. We watched the Patriots not make the playoffs last year for the first time in a very long time with a quarterback that Beautiful threw five side. touchdowns, and we realized he is not the quarterback of the future. So that's why we have Mac Jones. And if Mac Jones was green, as long as he could throw touchdown passes, that's all we would care about. And I'll tell you this right now, too. Mac Jones might have some leniency this first year in New England. But trust me, if, if, if Mac Jones starts playing – he will get hammered as much as anybody. The media up here is very tough on athletes. We had a guy by the name of Tony Easton at one point who was basically run out of town. He was white. Drew Bloodsoe, another very good white quarterback we had up here in New England, where the media basically ran him out of town because they couldn't win. So, you know, um, it has nothing to do with color. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry that people have to turn everything to color. But, I mean, the right. fact that the Patriots fans don't think Cam Newton is the quarterback – has nothing to do with the color of his skin. It has to do with the fact he cannot throw a football. And did, you hear what, did you hear what some of the receivers were saying after the game? No. One of the receivers were saying that they were, like, shocked because 
you, you saw the drop in the end zone where Mac just put that ball on a like he threw that on a rope, man. There perfect. was I saw that perfect pass right in the right in the receiver's hand, and it was perfect yeah, coverage. Yeah, I heard something about that. I thought that was ridiculous. Hey, John. Yeah. What's what's Lab Aids? Lab Aids. Lab Aids is the company I work for. So that's who I work for. I work for a science company oh. called Lab Aids, and we create a curriculum, STEM curriculum for schools. So that's who I who, that's who I work for. That's who I'm employed by. Employed for. Employed by. I can't yeah, speak. I was, yeah, yeah, it's my company. Yeah, I was. No, that's cool, man. I was like checking out what they uh, wrote and stuff. It's pretty amazing. It says uh, oh, John yeah. has spent his career promoting students based learning programs. John is extremely excited about being part of this team. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh that's yeah, cool. great company, great people. It's a little small company based in New York, and uh, really they create an amazing curriculum for science students. And it's really just a small little family, great company, full of good people, and uh, it's a great place to work. So yeah, very very happy that I've kind of found this little land. You're a good man, and, John. You're eh. a good man, brother. You really well, I try. I'm good some days, not so good other days. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, have you heard my friend Mike on the radio yet? My friend Mike Evans. I was telling you about no. the morning drive sports guy in Denver. Well, Dina Joe's in Colorado. So my best friend, Mike Evans, is the morning drive sports guy in Denver. Jay Baby and Jeff Duck would probably know who that is, too. Yeah. He's pretty well known, I think, out there. So I think he's kind of like uh, he's the big sports name in the morning. He's on with. Uh, yeah, that's my that's my best friend. He was my best man at my wedding and I was his best man. He grew up in New Hampshire with me. We grew up a couple miles apart. And I actually saw him on that guys weekend we had a few weeks back in Maine. So, yeah, I've known Mike since literally before kindergarten. So he's a great guy. And back in the day, uh, he would actually call me when the Broncos were playing the Patriots and I would go on the air and I would kind of rag on the on the Broncos <laughs> until fans started getting sick of me. And I was kind of booted from the air. But I was on uh, KFAN several times uh, back in the day, back when Brady was playing. It was kind of funny. So, Eric, what's up with you, man? And coming, you too. I'm kind of talking my head off. Well, um, so I'll put the both of you. <laughs> well, I, I, well shot, my, right? my weekend is, you know, the same as usual. Um, you know, I'm just at home right now. Yeah. What well, I know, I know Cummings hasn't been on the, the pod, do, doing a whole lot of podcasting for a week. I mean, I, I'd, I'd heard about like his, his grandmother having an unfortunate injury. Oh, no, I didn't know about this, Cummings. What happened to your grandmother? Uh, she got dizzy out here on, and she fell off uh, my front porch, and she fell in my flower bed, and she broke her humerus. Oh man, I, mean, I got to say that's not funny. No. Ouch. Yeah, she broke it, and uh, she's been staying here with me. Um, Welcome, Heather. She said your uh, grandfather died. No, no, no not no. Yeah, was that supposed to be a pun? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you caught it. Thank you. She, uh, I caught that one. I was, thank you. I was trying very hard not to laugh. I was like, I don't know if I should laugh or not, but that was a good one. <laughs> thank you. You got that right, Cummings. Uh, yeah, I got it. All right, thank you. <laughs> she, she just, I don't know. She's been staying here ever since. Uh, ever since she fell, she, she came up here because you know, last year we didn't have in-person school here, right? So my daughter missed out on the whole kindergarten experience. So she never got to go to kindergarten. So fir first grade, her first day of first grade was her actual first day of school, like inside the schoolroom setting, you know. And um, so she came up here to see my daughter after she got out of school. And she they were going to take her somewhere. They were going to take her to a restaurant. Her and my mom was going to take her to a restaurant. And she was going to go. And, like, my front porch, man, it's like one step. Like, it's nothing. And um, she got dizzy and she fell. And oh God, dude, it looked terrible. Oh, no. It looked terrible. But they oh, didn't do the surgery on it. How old is she? Seventy nine. Okay, so wow. she's yeah, she's up, she's there, up there. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, my cousin how, actually. How uh, is she doing now? Older. Is she okay or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now she's okay. They got her in a hanging arm cast, like where they got a thing around her neck and it connects to the cast. Oh, okay. The sling. She, she should be good. No, yeah. no, no, no. They call it, that, that's what they actually call it—a hanging arm cast. Like, because uh, the sling, the sling wouldn't work to push the bone back in. So while she's standing up, like it's actually pushing, forcing the bone back in. And then when she goes back in three weeks, they're trying this new thing to where, like, they may be in a couple of years doing away with cast the way we know them now. Wow. And uh, they're going to try this new type of cast in three weeks. They're going to cut that one off. And, um, they're going to put a cast on her and it's not even a cast. It's more like a, you know, like a boot when you like hurt your foot or something. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, going to put that on her arm and they're going to pressurize it with air. 
and the right. exact PSI yeah. will force the bone back in, and it'll it'll be able to have like a like a little fan on it to keep her arm cool, so she won't have the itching and stuff like you do with a normal cast. Uh huh. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm say um, a I, did they have to surgically implant anything in her? No. That's good. Uh, I, I feel you, man. My older cousin, uh, she was at a uh, resort. Um, this was like a few weeks ago. Uh, and she, uh, unfortunately, she was a little drunk and she uh, was playing around and she she, she uh, slipped on a water slide, on the top of the water slide and she fell on the top of her head and then she slid down the slide and she was face down in the water. Her friends thought she was joking around. They figured, and then when she didn't get up for air, they wanted, They figured out that she wasn't joking around, so they run to they ran to her, picked her up, and called nine one one. She wound up having severe head trauma, oh and God. now she's uh, now she's uh, has a, a, a an infection in her head that they're trying to fight. I mean, she finally woke up, uh, and she was being re- for a while. She wasn't responsive. They thought they were going to have to take her off uh, life support and let her go, mm-hmm. but she was being responsive and. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's fighting for her life right now. Um, mm. and it just, it just goes to show, you know, like, you know, you could be having a good time, but you know, the littlest things could cause the most horrific outcomes. I'll tell you, I think, I think that's, that's one of the things I've been saying the last few weeks on this show where, you know, I've been in one of those clusters where, man, you know, first my father-in-law passed away and then we had two of my wife's uncles get sick and then my father ended up in the hospital. Then my brother-in-law ended up in the hospital and, you know, it makes you really start to think it's like, you know, all the things we worry about in this life, we worry about our jobs. We worry about how much money we have. We worry about, you know, do we need a new car? Do we have to do this? Do we have to do that? And really when it comes down to it, at the end, all that matters, honestly, is that you have hopefully some loved ones around you that you care about. And, you know, if you have a family maybe that you're close to, that's wonderful. If you have a family hey, maybe that you're estranged from, you know, maybe mm-hmm. you can try to, you know, patch that up a little bit and get back with some people that you love. Hey, Father Brian, mm-hmm. I mean, because I told the story a little bit earlier. And I was talking about my dad and the relationship we had when I was young. And it was, you know, abusive at times. And it was hard. But the one thing that I do that I'm very thankful for to this day was even though my father was very abusive when I was a young kid, cue Bella, welcome. Um, we were able to make amends after three years of not talking. He and I started talking again right before That's I got great. married. And for the span of, geez, probably a good 15, 16 years, we had, I would say, a fairly decent relationship with each other. And then he had a stroke. And since he had that stroke, you know, he's still physically okay, but his mind hasn't been the same. And unfortunately, mm. after that stroke, he kind of reverted back a little bit to the way he used to be, which has been kind of hard to deal with. But I'm really thankful that I was able to, you know, forgive him for some of the things that he had done. And he and I did have a span of time where we did get along and we did do a lot of things together. And I think we learned to, you know, I, I guess I was able to appreciate some of the things that made him the person that he was. Cause you know, when, when you're in a relationship with anybody, like for me, you know, with my father, with him being abusive, you know, I look back on his life, you know, and thinking about how his parents were and how his father was and, you know, how he struggled literally, literally having nothing. I mean, his parents were very poor and his father was very abusive and he grew up and he had a very tough life and he was always embarrassed you know, by the fact that he had ripped clothes and didn't have anything. And, you know, for whatever reason, I think he had a very difficult road. And then, you know, finally he meets my mother, he gets married. And then a short time after they're married, he finds out that my mother has muscular dystrophy. And at the time they told her she was going to die by the time she was 40 years old. She eventually died at 67. But he was a guy that grew up with nothing. He finally you know, worked his ass off, went 10 years night school, got his college degree, was able to get a good job, buy a house, you know, support his family to the best of his ability. It wasn't, it wasn't uh-huh. bad, but we had, we had enough for what we needed, but then his wife got sick and he had to eventually take care of her for almost, geez, 30 years until, you know, the end when she was bedridden, you know, for the last two or three years of her life. Yeah. So, you know, he, he had a lot to deal with and not, not that it makes it right that he did any of the things that he did, but as a father and as a parent now where I have a wife and I've got four kids and my oldest son has autism and my daughter's had issues and things like that, you know, you tend to 
understand a little bit better. I think I understood the anxiety that he dealt with in his life. I mean, he didn't handle it right, but I was able to kind of put that behind us a little bit and at least have some type of relationship with him. So I guess, you know, my point is when when it all comes down to it, what what it's really all about is just, you know, being happy with your life, find a way to be happy with yourself, you know, see you, Jeremy. If, if you're not a yes, take care, Jeremy. If you if you're not a model, if you're not you know all the things you want to be, that's okay. Be happy with the person that looks back at you in the mirror every day. Be happy with the person that you are, and try to be happy with some of the people you have around you. And again, if you do have people in your life that are extremely toxic, maybe you need to take a break from those people or move on from those people completely. Because really, first and foremost, you have to take care of yourself. But life is so yeah. short. And just try to make the best of it, you know, as much as you can for yourself. Live life to the fullest. Be happy. You know, wake Amen. up every, every day and celebrate your life. And I don't know if you guys feel if you guys have anything you want to add, but that's just how I've been feeling a lot lately. Lately, and I'm trying to live so that speaking, way. Yeah. So, uh, Jimmy. speaking of speaking of your daughter earlier, how's she doing now? Is she doing a lot better? Because the last time she, I talked to you, she is. You know, I can't her, you, I can't talk about too many things because she doesn't like me to talk about it. But um, there there was there was something that was brought to our attention last August. And uh, we are dealing with that. So okay. uh, I can't talk anything more about it, but it, it, it nah, was a I big thing. I yeah, it was a big that, thing. Yeah. But no, she she's doing well. She is working That's right good. now. She's working in the grocery store. Uh, her freshman and sophomore year in school, she's gotten all straight A's. Uh, she wants hey, to be a doctor. Nice. She's thinking about maybe being a psycho- psychiatrist. And nice, but, uh, I, I will say that the month of August is a very difficult month for her for a personal reason. So we're trying to get through the month of August because the last couple of years she's ended up you know, living in a place, uh, leaving home and having to go someplace for a couple of weeks. And we're kind of hoping to avoid that this year. But uh, right. no, as of right now, she's doing pretty well. She's fighting through the month of August to the best of her ability. And you know, we're mm-hmm. so proud. We love her. But uh, she certainly had uh, some, I don't like the word luck, but some bad challenges i guess you know in her life and what we're hoping well, nah, that, uh, that's, that's great to hear she's doing good she i is. was uh she's doing better. you know I, I i like to pray for her and other other people who uh go through those uh problems too because you know as you know as someone who went through some somewhat of what she went through uh i get it i mean for guys and girls it's a different situation yeah. but relatively it's the same well, there, there was something, and I, I can't, like I said, I can't say it, but there was something that was different than what we originally talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, that uh, that's what I was going to say, but there's about. some things that are different. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, I understood with, you know, she is a wonderful when she was woman. getting picked on and being like, yep. that she felt like she was being tortured with being picked on and stuff. And I get it. I really do. It's terrible. I you mean, know, you see stories, was, this story, <clears> out there, they kill themselves. They take their lives. Because they've been yeah. through, you know, so many negative things. It, this is—I don't know if I don't think I told the story really quickly. This is funny. Uh, my Caitlin's learning to drive, you know, so we've had her in the car quite a bit lately. The other day, we're on the highway and she's driving, and I think I may have already told the story, but it's funny anyway for the people that are new in here now. I'm in the passenger seat. And I kept going. <sighs> I kept like deep breathing in and blowing out. I did it, I guess, like four or five times. So after I did it like the fourth time, Kayla just kind of glances over. She's like, Dad, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah. And she was, will you keep breathing? I'm like, Caitlin, let me be clear. <laughs> this is not a you problem. This is a me problem. You are doing just fine. I'm just having a very hard time being in the high on the highway with my 16 year old daughter as she drives at 65 miles an hour. So this isn't you. I'm just afraid. <laughs> so she laughed like this no. is not a you. This is a me. Oh, this is a me like problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is a me problem. I was, oh, I was <laughs> but she, she did great. But still, you know, when you're with an inexperienced driver, it's like, oh god, it was it was scary. But she did okay. So, so it's, it's Mike, I mean, Mike, you're, you're, a smart, you're a smart man, Mike. What do you think about uh, some of the things we've talked about? We'll wrap it up soon. But just kind of curious. As I the, think just to sum it up, um, yeah. uh, it's I think this is a very good topic, and a lot of times we avoid talking to other people about it because failure things seems to be. Right is portrayed to be a negative or a deficit or makes us look less than, and it's not the case. Uh, I think uh, in any thing in life to be successful, failure has to happen because true success comes from endurance and persevering mm-hmm. through these things and, and just embracing the failure in a sense and, and taking something positive out of it. Instead of letting it be a negative and negating your attempts Take something positive or lesson out of it and apply that to f- the future because uh, you'll be unstoppable. If you continue to persevere, you will break through. That's right. I don't know if anyone saw the last Rocky Balboa movie. And again, it was like <laughs> whatever. But he gave to his son 
the best speech I have ever seen to his son. His son was like a millennial complaining about his life. And Rocky gave this speech. I mean, this was like, you know, this was obviously like Sylvester Stallone giving a speech. And one of the one of the last parts of the speech was, he goes, son, you have to remember, life isn't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. You have to. Yes, I love that, forward. dude. If you yes, don't, me too. I and love he that. said that's how winning. Bumps. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna text you the clip, Mike, so you can watch the speech. The whole thing will literally give you goosebumps. It's an amazing. Thing, I just dude. got at you saying almost, that for crying out loud. I almost teared up, dude. So so spot on, thing. you know. But anyway, so Eric, how about you? What do you think about some of the things we've been talking about, Eric? I'd like to hear your opinion also. Well, I mean, good discussion as usual. I mean, do you feel the same way that, uh, you know, there are certain things you need to do in life to, I guess, achieve? I mean, because I, I look at you, right. you know, you, you, I, I don't know what your goals are, but I mean, for what you've done, I mean, you, you're a guy that's been up against it a little bit. You've had some challenges and you're living right. on your own. You're living your life on your terms. You're very successful here on Podbean. You've done a lot of right. really good things. So, I mean, you, in my opinion, are a person that's an example of someone that can get over difficult odds and achieve. Right. You know, and you've done it, you know, how, how do you think you've been, how, how have you remained so positive being, you've had some. Well, um, I, I know like pessimism and, you know, negativity are really not my things because, because I, I mean, I like to have an optimistic outlook on life that, that, that th things will get better and, you know, and, you know, you know, you just got to keep moving forward. Yeah, you do. You have to keep moving forward. We we all have bad periods of time. We all struggle. We all fail. Mm -hmm. But it is those people that are able to get up and just keep moving forward and keep doing their thing. Uh, those are the ones that are able to, you know, succeed and at least ha at least try to you know, be happy. And Ram Ramiar, welcome to the show. Good to see you down there. I just wanted to acknowledge you. So Eric, do you want to run off some of the shows that are coming up, and then we'll kind of wrap this up a little bit. It's well, just a new show, but I've had fun. Well, like coming up on Pod being live this weekend, of course, I think. Saturday and Sunday in prime time, you've got, you know, names like Crazy Town and um, you've got um, Dude Sean and, you know, and a couple other other friends. Um, of course, ne next week, of course, Ralph sh should be on Monday morning about 7 a.m. Eastern time. So definitely be on the lookout for him. And the old man's podcast, Dan, Joe and Eric, um, is back Monday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, and then ho hopefully you might have some shows you know, scheduled th this week, like uh, after the old man's podcast, and then, ho and hopefully, Cummings's culture might surprise us with some shows. And then, hey, Mike, if you then, could text me before you go on. Sorry, Eric, text me so I remember. I'd like to come on and listen to your show, Mike. Text me before you go yes. on. But thanks. All right, go ahead. Well, t Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon at five p.m. Eastern time, Mike Tampa Bay is the latest episode in Boundaries when he'll be joined by Dina Joe and company. Um, then the slightly serious show on weeknights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time, unless he decides to do an impromptu show over the weekend. Um, and then, of course, the Beans and Weenie show Monday through Friday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, funny show. Funny show. And then, that was last night. Yes. <laughs> They're very funny. Um, Slacker oh. 82 Alpha on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, Torch the Poet on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern if he's doing a show next week. Um and Chris unplugged Friday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, you know, and hopefully, you know, Crazy Kane. He, if he, if he's on, either maybe on this week or next this weekend or next weekend, so definitely be on the lookout for him, and and also be on the lookout for other names like Freedom Warrior, Chuck and Billy's Not Your Cup of Tea, and Linda Longa, and Brian and Rebecca, and and um uh, and then Cubella Kate and Tuttles with their Talk Hard podcast on Tuesday evening at 10 p.m. and hopefully. We'll be seeing more episodes of Trice Talk very soon and Pink Squirrel and, and Laura and Lou's Communication Station and many others. Awesome. And I should be back on, I think, Monday at 1130 as well. So I, I'm going to try to do a few more shows next week and maybe get a little bit yep. more regular. And uh, yep. I, again, for all of you that came in, I really appreciate it. And I hope this show, you know, if anyone missed the part where we talked about some of the things that people do who are mm -hmm. very successful, I hope that helps. And uh, again, I hope you always have fun when you come in. So thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. I each and every one of you. Yeah, Captain Jimmy here on Podbean and Tin Can as yeah, well no as problem. and also um you know, you know, I'm trying to think of a couple more podcast friends before I forget them. Um like like, like Lady Me whenever she's doing impromptu shows and and ho hopefully Dennis Lee will have some new episodes of Tall Tales and the Rabbit Hole come back soon and Jester and company with the It's Doomsday podcast, if they're doing an impromptu show tonight, be on the lookout for them. 
I like those freaky shows. Those are good. I love the Dennis Lee show. That show's awesome. He just gets on and just goes off on all these conspiracy things, and I love his show. Yeah. Show. Pink Squirrel's another good friend. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I really appreciate your show, John. It's very uh, inspirational, and I, I like the positive it. vibe I get from it. That's why I continue I'm trying. to come in. I'm Agreed. Good. Good. I'm Agreed. Glad you're exactly. <laughs> All right, hey, Mike, uh, text me when you go on. I want to listen to your show today. And everybody, thank you so much for coming in. Eric, take yes, care, sir. Buddy, as always. Yeah, love you and God bless you, everybody. Enjoy the rest when of the weekend. When are you going to be on, Mike? Uh, about an hour, hour and a half. Okay. So probably yeah. about at 5.30 or 6 p.m. Eastern time. So that would be about 4.30 or 5 p.m. Central time. Awesome. All right. All right, everybody. Like take, computer care. Soon. <laughs> take care now. Oh. See you. Later.